All right, so here is another problem. Uh, it is um, 18E, the problem number 9. So what we need to find is the magnitude and direction of the net electric field at point A. Okay, um, so you can see that the two um, particles in the diagram have the same charge. So let me just denote this charge by capital Q, capital Q. Uh, the distance separating, uh, separating these charges, now uh, I will denote this distance by D, okay? And the distance between point, um, yes, and the distance between point A and B, okay, I will uh, just denote by L, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, the um, so the construction of this problem is is the following that I actually need to find uh, in order to find the net electric field and for this I will need to find the electric field generated by the charge number one and the charge number two okay uh, for this I will have to have uh, the distance uh, joining the point A and one of these charges. This distance is the same for both of them. And let me denote this distance by R, okay? So R is unknown, I need to find it first. So uh, by the construction of the problem, it is obvious that this distance is D over two. And therefore we know that R squared is the same as is um, uh, equals um, D over two. So this side, this side squared, plus L squared, right? Okay, and from here you'll be able to find this R. Again, so this distance is D squared divided by two. Why? Because the entire distance uh, between the charge number one and the charge number two, this distance is D. Okay, then this distance is D over two and this distance is D over two. Uh, this distance is known, it's L. Okay, so in this problem, L is 2 centimeters and the distance D is 3 centimeters. Okay, and therefore you can substitute the numbers and actually compute R. Okay, I'm not going to do this. I will just write that R is given by the square root of D over 2 squared plus L squared. And from now on, I will assume uh, that we know R. Okay, so now um, I need to find the electric field due to charge number one. Um, well, first of all, I will place a test positive charge at the point A and I determine the direction uh, of the uh, net electric field at point A, uh, of the electric field at point A due to the charge number one, and then I will repeat the same for uh, the charge number two. So this will be E1, this will be E2. Okay, uh, and then of course uh, they will add into the net electric field. Um, by construction it is uh, almost obvious that uh, the net electric field only will, will only have the Y component uh, but uh, one doesn't have to necessarily um, assume that or necessarily see that. Uh, without, uh, we can actually do the calculation and uh, show this explicitly. Okay, so we'll start by finding the magnitude of the electric field due to the charge, due to charge one. Okay, it is given by the Coulomb constant times the magnitude of this charge, I denote it by Q, divided by r squared. r squared, as a matter of fact, you found, so over here, okay? It is already a number. Fine, what about the magnitude of the electric field number two? Well, it is given by k dot q over r squared, and as a matter of fact, it's absolutely the same uh, as the magnitude of the electric field E1. Again, this is because the charges uh, the charges of uh, in this system, so the charge of Q1 and the charge of Q2 are the same, yeah? All right, so we found that. Uh, the next step would be to find the net electric field. But before we proceed, 
it is also uh, it also would be good to find what is the vector e1 vector e1 not only the magnitude but the vector because we need to find at the end of the day the net value for this electric field so we need to find the vectors e1 and e2 okay so uh, the vector e1 oh well this we will start uh, doing step by step here operation we will start with x component so let me remove the vector over here we just write e1 x so the x component of that um here i will draw my x axis this is my y axis okay this is e1 this will be x component of e1 and this will be y component of e1 okay so to proceed i need to find at least one angle okay so it is uh, straightforward to see that this angle is the same as this angle okay and if i would like to define let's call this angle alpha so and if i would be able to find the angle alpha i would be able to find essentially everything so for this i will ask myself so i will i will continue over here uh, in a little bit later so i will ask myself what is tangent of this angle alpha well it is given by the ratio of what to what of the opposite side to this angle and in this case uh, the opposite side to this angle is the distance between the charge number one and the point b yes so it will be d over two okay and it's divided by the adjacent side and the adjacent side is uh, the distance which we called l okay so it means that alpha this angle will be given by the inverse tangent tangent minus one of d divided by 2l i simplify this ratio a little bit okay that from here follows here and i will be able to find the numerical value of this alpha because the numbers are given for both distances d and l okay now i will assume that we found this alpha in degrees okay so now i can ask myself what is the uh, the x component of the vector e1x we found the magnitude okay it's so given over here you can substitute the numbers and find uh, the magnitude in numerical form so now i would like to find the x component okay so the x component is this uh, contribution over here or this contribution over here it is opposite side to the angle alpha and therefore i will multiply the magnitude of this vector uh, by sine of the angle alpha okay so what about the y component of this vector well it is e1 and the first thing i would like to ask myself as well if it's positive or negative and from the figure it is ob uh, more or less so obvious that it is negative all right so minus and in this case uh, this will be the adjacent uh, side to the angle alpha and so it will be cosine of alpha very good so uh, and again substitute the numbers find uh, uh, these uh, values numerically so the vector e1 will have the uh, components e1 that's a numerical value already right sine of alpha i'm just writing this in uh, analytical form but you can actually substitute the numbers times cosine of alpha okay perfect so let me separate here and continue um so now uh, for the uh, vector e2 for the vector e2 you can look in this figure over here and see that again uh, repeat the same calculations of this uh, angle here and this angle over here and you can show that this angle will be the same as the angle alpha okay and this angle will be the same of, uh, as the angle of alpha uh, then the uh, the uh, magnitude is uh, e2 
and it is actually the same as the magnitude E1, okay? So they're equal to each other, uh, wonderful. Uh, so from now on, I will just use E1 to, to denote the magnitude of both uh, electric fields. Okay, so E1. So as a matter, uh, so we will continue with the X component and I will not write this step by step operation. I will just immediately write the answer. So the X component, we can immediately see that it is opposite to the X axis and therefore it will come with a minus sign. Times sine of alpha, you can explicitly show this sine of alpha again. So because this is opposite uh, side to this angle and this angle, you can easily establish is the same as the angle alpha. Okay, minus E1 times sine of alpha. Uh, and the Y component is also minus E1. It's also negative R times cosine of alpha. And again, why it's negative? Uh, because it will face in this direction and it is opposite to the Y. The, the direction of this is opposite to the Y axis. Okay, so to find the net uh, electric field, um, we need to add these vectors. Okay, so let's proceed with that. So we add each component together. So the X, is co X components will add up and the Y components will add up. When I do this with the X component, I can see that these contributions we just exactly cancel each other, right? Remember that the magnitudes are the same. Okay, so and the Y components will just add up. Uh, at the end of the day, I will have 0, comma, 2, uh, and I forgot the minus sign, um, the magnitude E1 times cosine of alpha. Okay, so at this point, I believe you already have these numbers over here written, and therefore it's pretty straightforward to, to compute that. So they're asking about the direction. Well, the direction is kind of obvious. So the direction is 270 degrees, right? Because it's an only Y component. And I would like to measure this from the op uh, positive X axis. So it is 270 degrees counterclockwise from the positive X axis. Or you can say that this is counterclockwise from the positive X axis and it is negative 90 degrees, but it's a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit bizarre way to, to put it, okay? So anyway, so this is uh, the uh, the final result. And uh, I believe you will, uh, just by substituting the numbers, the numbers you will be able to compute uh, everything else. Um, just for you to cross check me, I will provide you my answer. Just give me a second. Okay, so my answer I obtained is, um, all right, so directions I already told you and the magnitude, again, so you have to cross check me uh, for these numbers I have over here, three centimeters, 4.7 micro coulomb, it is 4.7 times 10 to the negative six uh, coulomb. Okay, and this distance between points A and B given, uh, is given to be two centimeters. So it's two times uh, 10 to the negative two meters. Uh, for uh, these numbers, I got approximately 1.08 times 10 to the po uh, positive eight newtons divided by Coulomb for the magnitude of the net electric field. Well, the magnitude of the, electric, uh, the net electric field will be, uh, in this case, will just coincide uh, with this number, right? Because uh, the x component here is zero. So this is the final result.